I now invite Mr. Kirby Gokin to take a seat at the petitioner's table. You have the floor, sir. My name is Kirby Gukin, and I'm speaking today on behalf of the Western Sahara Human Rights Watch. Western Sahara is the touchstone of credibility for the United Nations. Excellencies, Western Sahara is a colonial country, the administering power of which is Spain. The United Nations called upon the administering power, Spain, to decolonize the territory. Spain did not comply with its obligation, and now most of the territory is occupied by Morocco. The question of Western Sahara is a decolonization conflict and is a responsibility of the United Nations. The solution to this conflict is the self-determination of the territory either through the granting of independence or through the holding of a referendum on self-determination. This has been confirmed by the International Court of Justice in its advisory opinion on Western Sahara. Excellencies, in the report of the Mission to Western Sahara issued in 2006, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights clearly states that the right to self-determination for the people of Western Sahara must be ensured and implemented without any further delay. Almost all human rights violations and concerns with regard to the people of Western Sahara stem from the non-implementation of this fundamental human right. Excellencies, the facts confirm year after year that the statements in this report are true. First, the civil and political rights are being systematically violated. The number of Sahari political prisoners who die in Moroccan prisons is increasing at an alarming rate. This year, four more prisoners have been added to this black list. Abdul Baki Alien Antaha, Abdel Hai Cheb, Mohamed El Brahimi, and Boubacar Argon. The civilian political prisoners of the Gizemizik group, some of them sentenced to life imprisonment, remain in prison, although their convictions were handed down by a military court in a trial where all of their basic human rights were violated. The Kingdom of Morocco must release or conduct a new trial with full fair trial guarantees of the Gedemizik civilian prisoners who were convicted by a military court following an unfair trial. Equally serious, today, in October 2015, Morocco has not investigated or convicted the perpetrators responsible for the killing of the Sahrawi victims during the Moroccan violence that led to the tragic events in November 2010. That is, the killing of the child, Nayem El Garhi, and the adults, Jadiatu Ebahe and Babi Hamdeh. The economic rights continue to be systematically violated as well. In the territory of Western Sahara that, uh, that it occupies, Morocco continues to extract phosphates from the rich mine of Bukhara. Morocco is also plundering on its own or with the complicity of the European Union and European private businesses the fisheries in the Sahari waters under its control. The exploitation of the phosphates and the fisheries are carried out without considering the interests or the wishes of the local population. Third, the social and cultural rights continue to be systematically violated in the part of the Western Sahara it occupies. Morocco continues to prohibit the use of haimas, a symbol of Sahrawi indigenous culture. Morocco continues to prohibit the use of masalas, thus violating Article 18 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights in order to subject the Sahrawi population to the authority of Morocco's official religious leaders at their official religious centers. Morocco has been burying victims of violence, like Mohamed Lamin Haidala, without the consent of their families. Excellencies, the conflict of Western Sahara has lasted far too long, but this cannot become an excuse for the United Nations to avoid its responsibility laid down in Article 73 of the chart and its own resolutions. Therefore, we request that the General Assembly require the Secretary General and the Security Council to develop a roadmap with a view to ending colonization, to respecting the right to self-determination and all other human rights. The roadmap must include at least the following, and it must be done urgently. That is, to destroy the wall which separates the territory, and of the millions of anti-personnel landmines that surround it. They also to establish um, a, um, the establishment of a UN permanent mechanism on the ground for monitoring and ensuring the respect for human rights in the territory, the immediate holding of the referendum on self-determination by setting a date for it, and the provision that in case of refusal of the Kingdom of Morocco to comply. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank, I thank Mr. Kirby Gokin for the information he has furnished to the committee. Does any member wish to put a question to Mr. Gokin? I thank Mr. Kirby.